The most frustrating thing when I'm on a shoot is fumbling around and going through the menu settings in my camera. I don't wanna be taken out of the moment and miss a shot that could have enhanced my film or story I'm trying to tell. A camera is a tool, and the better you know it, the better you can use it. This goes for any camera you have, whether that's a newer camera or an older camera. Take time to understand it so you can be the best creative person possible when working. Today, I wanna to share five hacks with the Sony cameras that have helped me significantly when I'm shooting so that operating my camera becomes second nature instead of me trying to figure out where or what I'm trying to change. Sony offers so many different white balance settings in the camera that it can be overwhelming to choose the right one for you and the right scene on the day you wanna shoot. Whether you wanna shoot daylight, shade, cloudy, incandescent, fluorescent warm white, cool white, I'm gonna stop there because you get my point. There's so many different options that it would be nice to have a quick and easy way to access the ones you use regularly. Thankfully, Sony offers three custom white balance settings at the bottom of this menu. And here's how we're gonna maximize these settings. When I'm shooting, I typically cycle through three different white balances. That's 3200, 4300, and 5500. I'm gonna show you how I got these locked into the custom settings, but first, here's what you'll need. The first thing you'll need is a white balance card. You can pick these up just about anywhere. And if you don't have one or are struggling to get one, you can just use a white piece of paper. Secondly, a bicolor light is crucial for this test. You can use just about any bicolor light, but for this illustration, I'm using the Aperture MC. What you'll need to do is get your white balance card set up in the frame. Turn off all your other lights so the measurement isn't ruined. Set the light to the Kelvin you'd want to save it as and capture your white balance. You'll notice after you do that, it will give you a readout of what the camera measured. Depending on the light, you might have to do some adjusting in order to get the appropriate white balance you're wanting. There could also be a color shift in the white balance. And what's great about the Sony cameras is you can adjust this to your liking as well. Once you get the white balance you're looking for, lock it in and boom, you're done. Now you can quickly be able to change the white balance scenes without having to dig through the whole menu. And as an added bonus, you still have the Kelvin option right above, preparing you for any kind of lighting situation. Just about everyone under the sun has complained about the Sony menu system. And thankfully a way around this is the My Menu tab. This will look different for everyone, but take some time going through the menu and add the things that you use most when shooting. You can separate things into pages as well. So for example, if you want all your video settings on one page and your audio settings on the other, you can do that as well. The way I have mine set up has allowed me to never go through the main menu settings ever again. This is another way for you to speed up your workflow when shooting. For so long, I thought the function tab was gimmicky. I never used it for anything and thought it was a waste of time. Well, it's not. Think of this as another way to quickly access things from your camera that you don't necessarily want to dive through the menus for or save as a custom button. You can add up to 12 different things on this menu. And again, it makes your shooting experience so much faster and more efficient. The way I have mine set up is I have a focal length adjustment for when I have vintage lenses on my camera, like our last video. I have steady shot, face eye priority toggle, autofocus transition speed, sensitivity, and prioritizing which card to use. The possibilities are endless, so spend some time here as well because this feature will help you so much on future projects. Just like the white balance settings, there's so many different options for focus areas, and I only use two of them. If you're like me and you only use a couple of these options, you can get rid of the ones you don't use. Just go down to the AF-MF tab, click focus area, focus area limit, then uncheck the ones you don't use and hit OK. And now you can toggle through the focus area options that you like to use. Again, making your shooting more efficient. This option can be useful for the person who cycles back and forth between different picture profiles depending on the project you're shooting. If you're working on a short film and wanting to do heavy color grading, you're probably gonna wanna shoot in S-Log3. But if you're working on a corporate video where you need a quick turnaround, maybe you're gonna wanna shoot in something like S-Cinetone. It's a pain to scroll all the way down to find the right picture profile you're wanting for the project that you're working on. So a way around this is to copy the profiles you like and save them to the top of the menu. Just choose the picture profile setting you like, scroll down to copy, then choose the number and save it to the one you want. Now you can spend less time scrolling and more time shooting. I hope you found these tips helpful and let us know what tips you have for your camera in the comments below. 
If you liked this video and would like to see more in the future, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys in the next video.